are you playing now? Okay, all right. Uh, Miss Christy Biggs is going to play special. and to realize that he walks and talks with us. Uh, the God that created this world, that uh, spoke everything into existence, desires and uh, wants to hear from us. And I tell you, when we can have that walk and talk with him. I do appreciate you being here this morning. I, I, t- I, I hope that you've already been blessed for being in the Lord's house. And I know I have. I mean, every song, every special, the, the special, I, I tell you, just spoke to my heart. And uh, this, I have to say this, this past weekend has been such a, such a blessing to me. We went to the men's retreat, and uh, I tell you, God spoke to my heart each service. 
uh, Dr. Gibbs. Uh, he was, uh, he's not one of these uh, type of preachers that yells and screams in your face, uh, but it, just a very, very powerful preacher. And uh, I tell you, each message spoke to my heart and draw me closer to the Lord, and that's what it's all about. And uh, he spoke on the theme of the, the weekend was uh, being a prayer warrior. And I realized how much I lack in being a prayer warrior. And uh, I tell you, I was convicted and challenged to be, uh, to be a better prayer warrior. And I, I hope that uh, uh, I wish everybody could have heard the messages this weekend. It challenged me. And I know the men that ever, all the men that went, there was four from our church and then four from another church, a, a friend uh, from Lifeline. And uh, so they, they rode with us. And we just had, I tell you, we had such a, a good time. The Lord spoke to our hearts. And I, I tell you, it seemed like the altars, every time the altars were full of men just praying. And uh, uh, it was just a sweet, sweet weekend. And uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't take it back for anything. I tell you, I want to challenge you men if you're able to go next year. Uh, I tell you, the Lord has spoke to my heart during, at camp. Uh, I guess because of the, you're secluded from all the, uh, the phones. You don't have much of a phone reception there. You don't have uh, TVs and all that kind of stuff distracting you. You just get alone with God. And I tell you, it's good to get alone with God and uh, walk and talk with, with Him. And uh, we, not only did we have a good spiritual time, but we had a good fun time as well. Just uh, uh, Brother Jay, he, he came home with a first place trophy in the skeet shooting contest. And uh, I, I was asking some of the men from Good Shepherd, I said, uh, how'd you guys do? They were at the skeet shooting. I was playing cornhole. And uh, uh, they said, oh, we did okay. And I said, well, who won? And they said, oh, I don't know. We've never seen this guy before. But Man, he did not miss. He was amazing. And they just kept on going on and on. Well, then, lo and behold, Brother Jay walks up, and I go, how'd you do? He goes, oh, I won. And uh, I was like, you did? Well, congratulations. And we, I was all excited for him. And uh, so he, he, uh, he won. And there was a, it was a process of what they do is it's, uh, it's kind of like knockout. And that one, well, they'll say pull, and the guy in first, he'll... They'll, they'll have a skeet that flies out, and then that person tries to shoot, and if he misses the guy right ne behind him, he gets to shoot, and if he hits it, then the guy in front of him is knocked out. And, uh, and through a process, there was, there was plenty, there was a lot of men there. Um, all of them were men, and so uh, there were a lot of men there, and uh, Brother, Brother Jay won, and uh, so we, uh, we, we appreciate that, and uh, we had a good time with that. Now, Brother Tim and I, we played cornhole, and I was a three-year champion there, and um, I didn't win this year. <laughs> I'm going to blame it on Brother Tim, because the other years I won, I had different partners, and, uh, but no, I, uh, we, got, we got second place. We're in the last, or the, the final game, and we're championship game here, and, and uh, we're having a good time, and, and it's, it's getting challenging. I mean, this other team's a good team, but... And uh, they finally, the, the guy threw in four in a row. And uh, just, I was like, you got to be kidding me. It was neck and neck and neck until that point. And he hit four in a row. And uh, Brother Tim was like, ha, 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 oh, man, what a game. And he's all excited about, man, way to go. Good job. And I'm like, oh, good job. Good job. Good job. Brother Tim's over there. <laughs> oh, man, I can't believe you did that. Man, that was awesome. And he's all excited. I'm like, man, he's, he's, he's such an excited loser. <laughs> I moped around for an hour. I told him, I said, if I would have had a good partner, I would have won. No, we had we had such a good time, and second place is just first loser. And uh, uh, if you haven't, if you can't tell, I don't like to lose. I don't like to lose. But uh, uh, you know, losing graciously is a key. And uh, Brother Tim, he did, he was a fine example. I was very proud of him. Uh, just, I mean, he had a great attitude, and uh, I kind of, I still, I still a little bitter about it, but. Uh, <laughs> But uh, I had a few moments of silence. And there was some raging inside of me, but it was silence on the outside. But uh, no, we had, we had a great time. 
And uh, I applauded when they won the, you know, the prize. I was like, oh, yes. But it was fake. And uh, <laughs> no, we, we, had, we had such a good time. And men, they had a skeet shoot in the cornhole, and they had three-on-three basketball tournament. And uh, what's that? They had archery. Uh, they've done a new thing this year, and I'm actually going to talk to, I talked to the men that run it. It's an aerial archery. And Brother Brian would love this, I'm sure, but that what they, uh, they do is they have, a, it's like a skeet shoot, kind of, but it's a foam board, like about that big, and uh, they, they fling it up in the air, and then you shoot the bow at it, and uh, if you stick it, you get points. Well, there's only one guy that stuck it, well, two guys that stuck it, but it was not during the competition, the other guy. One guy stuck it, and he got a prize for sticking it because he was the only one that stuck it during the tournament. And then the other guy comes up, and he's just like, hey, let me try this. Jay does it. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I don't like some people, you know. <laughs> I would have been shooting until the stars came down, and I mean, I never would have hit it, but he, he does it. So some people make me sick, and uh, no, I'm just kidding. It was, it was such a good time, and, uh, and Brother Jack, I, I, I didn't speed this time. I didn't go 90 miles per hour, so you would have enjoyed riding your bike down there. Last time we went, Brother Jack and Brother Jimmy, they rode their bikes and their Harleys down following us. And uh, brother, uh, brother Jack was like, you're going to have to slow down. I don't drive my bike that fast. Jimmy's like, ah, oh, I do it all the time, you know. And, and I'm like, well, I'm going the speed limit. He goes, you're not going the speed limit. I said, well, I thought I was. I'm just going with the traffic. He goes, you're going 85, 90 mile an hour. And I'm like, no, no. Sure enough, Brother Phil told me, he goes, yeah, you were, too. Uh, uh, but anyways, it was, it was a good time. So uh, I do appreciate you being here this morning. It's good to ha- be in the Lord's house, isn't it? Good to ha- laugh and, and have a good time in the Lord's house. I tell you one other thing about the weekend. and I just, my cup's over, uh, overflowing right now. And uh, over the weekend, Brother uh, Dr. Gibbs, he said, you know, when you sing, He says, think about this when you sing. He says, think of it as it's the last time you get to sing to the Lord. Man, you know what I did this morning? I sang every song. He says, because think of that. Every song may be the last time you get to sing here on earth to the Lord. And you know what? I didn't care if any... How many in here have a good singing voice? Okay, a couple. A couple have a good singing voice. How many has horrible singing voices? All right, great. Well, aren't you glad God said make a joyful noise, not a beautiful noise? And and so, uh, you know, Dr. Gibbs was kind of making a comment, you know, sing out, sing out to the Lord. And and, uh, I want to challenge you to do that. It don't matter whatever. You're not singing to your neighbor anyways. You're singing to the Lord. And uh, whether you sound good or bad, it doesn't matter. Just lift up your voices. I'm going to challenge you. If I hear you during the congregation, I'm going to call you out. No, I, I... uh, I'm going to challenge you during the singing of the congregation, sing out to the Lord. As this, uh, I mean, it changed my, my, the, way, the whole way I approach singing now. I, I don't claim to have a good voice, but uh, I, I can sing to the Lord, and I love singing to the Lord. So uh, just remember that. Uh, this morning, I, I got a few uh, portions of Scripture that I want to be at, but uh, the Bible says this, and I'm thinking of the weekend and just thinking of a lot of things, and the Bible says, whether therefore, uh, whether therefore you eat or you drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Whatever you're doing in life, playing cornhole, <laughs> uh, shooting skeet, or if you're just walking down the road, do it all for the glory of God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 8, it says, we are confident, I say, and will, uh, willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore, we labor that whether present or absent, we may be accepted of Him. Everything we do in life should bring glory to Him and bring pl- praise to Him and to be pleasing in His sight. That's what our goal in life should be. And I, I want the Lord to say to me, as He said as he gave that parable of the, the stewards of the ten, par, uh, the ten talents and the five talents and the one talent, and uh, they went, and the ten talent man, he went and, and used those talents for the Lord, and he got ten more talents. You remember the story. And then the one that had five talents, he went and he doubled his as well. But the one that had one talent went and hid his talent 
And, and God said to those men that, or those people, I believe it was men that, uh, that gained more talents, He told them, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Now, He said to the one that didn't uh, uh, bring back uh, another talent, He went and hid his treasure or his talent in the ground and gave him just the one talent back. You remember the story. And, and uh, he, he did that and He says, thou wicked Slothful servant. He was saying, he says, take that away and give it to the one that has ten talents. I want to hear God to say to me, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want him to say to this church, well done, thou good and faithful servants. I want Putnamville Baptist Church to be pleasing in God's sight. Whatever we do, do all to the glory of God. You see, the Bible says this in 2 Corinthians 5.10. It says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. I want God to say, well done. As the pastor of this wonderful church, I want God to get the glory in everything we do, whether it's singing, uh, whether it's playing cornhole, or whatever it is, I want God to get the glory. I want God to be pleased in our, with every ministry, every song. Listen, every song that's sung, I want every word that's said, we need to bring glory to God. Bring Him glory. He's des- he deserves our adoration, our praise, doesn't He? Every ministry. And I believe the Lord is going to ret- return soon. We talked about this this past week. I've talked to a few men this past week with uh, all the things, the hurricanes and the wildfires. And uh, even the, on uh, the 23rd of this month, I don't know if you've done any, uh, hearing any, any conspiracy theory or whatever the things. Uh, but there's, all the stars are supposed to be lined up a certain way. And, and a lot of people are talking right now about the return of the Lord. Now, I know many of us are saying, oh, I've been hearing it since I've been born. I've, I've heard messages and messages and messages about the Lord returning. He's going to return. But do you realize that His return is imminent? That there's nothing has to be... It could be today. It really could be. And I believe that it's coming really soon, folks. I really do. I believe we need to get our, our houses in order. We need to get our lives in order because the Lord's return is coming soon. And, uh, you know, I, when he does come, I want him to find us faithful. I want him to find us pleasing in his sight. And I'm going to invite you to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1. The Bible says in verse 6, it says, And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were in samples to all that believe in Macedonia and Achaia. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad. So that we need not to speak anything. For they themselves show of us what manner of entering in and we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, again, thank you for your love, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, I thank you for this time that we have to just spend time with you and your word. And God, I pray that you would open up the bread of life and feed us from on high. Lord, nothing that it's uh, nothing uh, about me, but Lord, it's all about you. And Lord, I pray that you would open our hearts, help us to be uh, receptive to your word. And Lord, help us to be faithful and pleasing in your sight when you come. Lord, I pray that to each person here, as we, as we examine our hearts and as we come before you, Lord, that we would present ourselves a, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you. And God, I pray that you would do a work that only you can. And we'll give you the praise, the glory, the honor that comes from it. In Jesus' name, amen. How can we be found faithful? How can we be found pleasing in God's sight? Well, I believe from the scriptures here, we'll find five things. And actually, it tied into one of the messages that we, uh, we heard this weekend. And, and just Lord spoke to my heart. There's some of the points that, uh, that you might recognize that men have been there. But uh, number one, I believe we need to be saved. 
In order to be pleasing to God, you need to be saved. There's, listen to me, if you're not saved today, there's no, there's, it's impossible. For it's impossible to please God without faith. And if you're here today and you're not saved, you're not going to be pleasing in the sight. Notice there in verse 6 it says, And you became followers of us and of the Lord. I believe that's talking about salvation there, of uh, becoming a follower of the Lord. You know, before we can ever be found pleasing in the sight, we must be saved. The Bible says that which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, thee, ye must be born again. Jesus told Nicodemus there in that portion of Scripture, ye must be born again. He says that which is a flesh is flesh, that which is a spirit is spirit. Jesus is telling us that when you were born the first time, you, that was the flesh birth. Uh, I was born in October the 4th, 1977 to Rick and Cheryl Brown. And uh, I, that was my first birth. Well, 19, July the 13th, 1998 was my second birth when I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And when I got saved that day, that was my second birth. That was the spiritual birth. The first birth was the flesh birth. The second birth was the spiritual birth, that which is Flesh is flesh, that which is spirit is spirit. You must be born again. And so every person in here, if we want to be pleasing in God's sight, you must be born again. The Bible says, so then they that are uh, in the flesh cannot please God. It's impossible to please God if you're in the flesh. It don't matter how much you know or how much you uh, do for the poor, how much you give to the church. It don't matter uh, how involved you are in the ministry. If you're not saved, you're not being pleasing to God. It's all in vain. It's all empty. See, you might be thinking, but look at all I've done. Look at everything I've done. Look how much money I've given to the church. Look how involved I am. Yes, but it's all in the flesh. It's all in the flesh. I believe in order for our church to be a pleasing church, we must be saved. The church that's saved, there in Matthew 7, 21, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Can I say there's folks in here, could be possibly you may not be saved. I'm not here to convince you of your salvation or convince you uh, that you're not saved. My, my job is to present the gospel. The Holy Spirit will do His work. And if the Holy Spirit's working on your heart that you're not saved, today's the day of salvation and now's the accepted time. You don't have to wait until the end of the service. You come down to the altar right now and we'll make way for you. Because the most important part about this service is not, is not is, it's about getting people saved, leading people to the Lord and glorifying God. And when we lead people to the Lord, you know what it does? It brings a smile to our Savior's face. You see, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. There may be some in this church today that has done many wonderful works. Done some many wonderful things for the Lord, but they've never truly trusted in Lord Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, if you were to die right now, you would spend eternity in hell. Some say, well, I prayed, I prayed a prayer. I prayed a prayer, a prayer, Pastor. You can pray a prayer and not be saved. Did you realize that? I've talked to people that say, I've asked God to save me every night. Anybody else ever heard people like that? I ask God to save me every night. Well, then that's not true biblical salvation. True biblical salvation is you ask Him once, and what He does, He does well. He does forever. He gives unto us everlasting life. Biblical salvation is once you're truly saved, you're truly saved, you're saved. There's nothing that can take you out of the Father's hands. You must have faith that He will save you. If you're saying, Lord, save me every night, you're not having faith that God's saving you. Why? Because if God saved you, then you need to have faith and trust that He saved you. You see, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ephesians 2, 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, 
and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man shall boast. If he said that he, should, he would save you if you trusted in him, then that's what he said and that's what he'll do. God's not a liar. That is one of his immutable truths. God cannot lie. And if he said that he would save you, that's exactly what he'll do. Some say, well, pastor, I followed the plan. I followed a plan. You can do everything that the Romans road tells you to do and still not be saved. When my wife got saved, and I'm not trying to embarrass her, but uh, when we got married, um, I mean, the, my wife was one that she read her Bible every morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, before, right before she goes to work. She reads her, she still does that today. Every morning she reads her Bible. Um, she never said cuss words. She never drank a drink of alcohol. She never smoked a cigarette. She never done any of those things. After a few months of being married, she, we're laying there in bed about 1 o'clock in the morning, and she looks over to me and she says, I don't think I'm saved. And I'm like, what? Ugh. I mean, if there's anybody saved in this world, it's got to be my wife. I mean, the most godly person I've ever met in my life. And she said, I don't think I'm saved. So you know what I did? I went to the Romans Road. She says, I know that. I know that. I can quote that. But I still don't believe I'm saved. I didn't know what to do. I mean, at that time, I, I didn't, hadn't been to Bible college. I didn't, I didn't know the books of the Bible. I didn't know much of the Bible at all. And she said, I, I just don't believe I'm saved. So I called my pastor up. Two o'clock in the morning. That's what a pastor will do. No matter time or hour and the importance of the, the, the church of God. And uh, he came over and led her to the Lord. He brought out one scripture. And I believe that scripture was, He that believeth in him should not be ashamed. And she said, it was like a light bulb that went off. And she said, I've been ashamed of him. And she just repented there and she asked God to save her. You see, it doesn't matter if you know the Romans road. If you've never truly trusted in Jesus Christ, you're going to die and spend eternity in hell. You say, but Pastor, I, I prayed a prayer and I followed a plan. But if you don't know the person of Jesus Christ, never trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. Why am I saying this? Because I believe there's so many people in church today that have prayed a prayer, that have followed a plan, but they've never truly trusted in the person of Jesus Christ. I want to challenge you today to examine your heart. I'm not looking for notches on my belt. I'm not looking for that. I just want you to be sure. I want our church to be a saved church. A church that loves the Lord and that wants to live for the Lord. You see, it's not, in the, it's not in the plan, it's not in the prayers, but it's in the faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Then number two, I believe we need to be sending. We want to be a church that pleases God. We need to be sending. Look there in verse 7 and 8. It says, so, then, uh, so, they ye, uh, <clears throat> I'm sorry, so that ye were in samples to all that believed in Macedonia and Achaia. And he's saying there, hey, you guys were examples. You were, you were what you're supposed to be. But then it goes on to say for... From you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but notice this, but also in every place your faith to God were to spread abroad. They were telling, they were sending out the word of God. Not only do we need to be saved, but we need to be sending out the gospel, telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says there in Matthew 16, 15, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. You see, if we want to be pleasing to God, then our church needs to be sending the God, God's Word out. This is something that every one of us can take part in. You see, we can, there's three ways we can take part. Number one, we can be participants by going. Either going to the mission field or going out door to door or going to the grocery store and passing out tracts and just saying, Hey, Jesus loves you. I want you to read this. Hey, I want you to come and, and, and visit our church sometime. The Bible says, go ye therefore, that's a command to each one of us, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. So we can be participants by going, but also we can be providers by giving. We can be providers. I know there are some folks that aren't able to go out and go door to door or 
but you're able to go out and maybe pass out a track at the grocery store or sp stuff one in your bills. They love that when you do that. But you know the thing of it is, is God said his word would not return unto him void. We can be providers by giving. You say, well, I don't have much money, Pastor. I really don't. You know, the widow we didn't have much money either. But God said she gave all that she had. She gave more than anybody else. It's not the amount. See, God doesn't need our money. Can I just be very frank with you? God doesn't need your money. I've heard of people saying they get their giving statement back at the end of the year. And there was an actual man that said this. I could have bought a boat with this. I remember Brother Taylor told, told the man. You know what he said? He said this. Well, then you should have. You probably should have bought the boat then. Because God loves a cheerful giver. You know, it does, it's not the, how much you give. It's that we are giving. It's, it's that we are giving. You know, not everyone can go, but everyone can give something. You know, you say, well, even the smallest child, I, I, we've been training our children since they were little. And my wife had this. I, I can't claim, I like to claim it, but she's the smart one in the family. But uh, my wife taught our, care, our girls as soon as they started getting money for birthdays, for whatever they got money for. Well, what's your tithe? She started teaching them to tithe on that little bit amount. Maybe it was a dollar. Well, what's your tithe? And now today, Lizzie's got a job, and she's working, and she, she doesn't have to, we don't have to ask her, what's your tithe? She already gives her tithe. It's because we've trained her to give to the Lord. You see, I'm not bragging about us. I'm just saying we need to start teaching our children, and, and, and not only just teaching, but living it by giving. The Bible says, now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the, uh, of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated uh, with me as concerning giving and receiving. He's saying there wasn't anybody that was helping out, per, helping get me going. He said, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound on your account. Did you realize that you can never outgive God? Never outgive God. See, then I want you to notice also we can be petitioners by praying. You may not have much money, you may not have much strength to go out, but each one of us can pray. Every person in here can pray. How often do we pray for our missionaries? How often do we pray for? the leaders in our church, the leaders in our country. I tell you, you I learned this week, and something that challenged me, I, I used to have a, a prayer list, and I would write things that I, would, I wanted down uh, to pray about and things like that, but God challenged me this week. I just want, I want to be open with you. God challenged me this week. I'm going to start having a, a prayer list, and I'm going to write down things, and it's not just generic things. I, I want to pray for Christy. No, I'm going to list down everything that I want to pray for her about. So what you're going to notice in the next few weeks is you're going to notice, well, uh, that I'm going to come to you and I'm going to say, hey, there's, is there anything specifically I can pray for you about? And I'm going to write that in my little book and I'm going to be praying for you. And then once you find, and when the Lord answers that, I, I want you to tell me so I can, I can put a smiley face on that and where God has answered that. God challenged me this weekend to be a better prayer warrior and to pray for my church more. Pray for my family more. You see, we, need, we can all pray. You see, now, if you notice this, that these are all action words. Going, giving, praying. If we're going to be pleasing to God, we need to be actively serving God. We need to be actively doing these things. Be active in going out and telling folks about the Lord. We need to be actively giving unto the Lord. And we need to uh, be actively praying to the Lord for our missionaries and those that are in leadership and for each other to get the word of God out. Then I, I notice number three, we need to be sorry. We need to be sorry. There in verse 9 it says, I need to hasten here. It says, For they themselves show, uh, show of us what manner of entering in we had unto you and how... Ye turn to God from idols to serve the living, true God. If we want to be pleasing to God, we need to turn from our wicked, sinful ways. 
The Bible says there in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Brother Gibbs preached on that, that verse right there. And man, I tell you, uh, that turn from that wicked ways, he says, you know, we all need to be pure for, before, the God, before God. You know, if we want to get our prayers answered, we need to be pure. Come to Him uh, and and get our hearts right and say, uh, confess things. He was talking about a a case that he had with uh, Lester Roloff. And he he said, Lester Roloff, they were in this this courtroom and he said they were losing bad. He said that it was just uh, Dr. Gibbs and Lester Roloff here. And there was uh, those that were suing Lester Roloff. And he he said he had 12 uh, uh, attorneys there. And they were losing bad. And he said, Lester Roloff called him at 4 o'clock in the morning. So he came to his hotel room and they, they went there. And Lester Roloff said, he said, he says, we need to be pure. He said, we need to be clean before God. He said, if we expect to win this battle, we need to be, uh, pray and, and be clean before God. He says, so what I want you to do, he says, I want you to go over in that corner. And I want you to get right with God. I want you to get pure before God. And he says, I'm going to go over in this corner and I'm going to get pure Dr. Gibbs says he started, uh, that Lester Roth started praying and just confessing sin. And he said, I hope, I hope he thinks that I've got a, a short memory or something. And, and he, he said he started confessing sin and getting right with God. And he said, uh, next thing you know, he heard uh, Brother Roloff say this. He says, I don't hear you over there confessing. And before you know it, he said they started praying and asking God to forgive them of their wicked ways. And they said, he said this, he says, we're going to pray God to clean us. He said, but then what we're going to, he said, here's the plan. We're going to pray for God to work a miracle. He says, we're going to ask the judge to be sick. And we're going to ask God to make that judge sick. He said, you, want, you don't want him to die, do you? He said, no, I don't want him to die. He said, I just want him to be sick so we have to have another judge. He said, okay, as long as we don't want him to die. And uh, so then he goes on, he says, the second thing, he says, we want them them, uh, them attorneys to contradict each other. He said, just, just be at odds against each other. He said, so they went into the courtroom. He said, the judge was there. He said, but then before you know it, he said, they just started, the 12 uh, attorneys started arguing between each other. And after that, that whole thing was over, they dismissed the case, and those attorneys, that, that firm, they called and apologized and sent an apology letter to Dr. Roloff. You say, what, what's that prove? Proves prayer works. But it's very ineffective if we're not pure. We've got sin in our lives. We need to get right. We need to be sorry from our be sorry of our wicked ways. I, I wanna, I've got a lot here, but I need to go on. We need to be serving. Look there in verse 9, the end part of it. It says, And how ye turn from God, from God uh, to God from idols to serve the living and true God. We need to be serving. How many know someone that uh, at your job place that does nothing until the boss comes? <laughs> yeah, Lizzie's raising her hand back there. But yeah, you know, we all know people like that. They don't do any, They're they're out. They're over there hiding. You know, until the boss comes, and then they're slaving away. I mean, it's like they've been working for hours. I mean, I don't know how, but sweat drops start coming down and. You know, I believe that's how many Christians are. We just stand around and, and we think, oh, yeah, I know the Lord's coming. I'll get busier when I retire or, or, you know, when it gets closer, I'll get busier. But, folks, I believe the Lord's return soon and we need to get busy. The Bible says, then saith he unto his disciples, the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. For though I be free from all men, yet have I made myself servants unto all, that I might gain the more. I, I remember my first cruise that we went on, Christy and I, we went on and, and uh, I would get up and get my, my own drink and things like that. And then my friend would tell me, he'd say, he said, let them do that. I mean, let them do that. They're, they're serving you. And uh, and uh, and I'd get a soda, and I'd, I'd put my soda. I, I'd take my soda up to the where the the glass up to you know where the containers were and things like that. And he'd drink a drink, and after he'd get done with it, he just set it wherever it was on a stairwell or wherever he was. He just set it there, and I, I'm like, man, I'm, 
what are you doing? I mean, he says, oh, there'll be somebody. Next thing you know, there's somebody walking up steps. They pick it up, and they take it to the, the spot. Man, I tell you what, after watching that for about an hour, I decided I was going to be treated like a, a king as well. And then I tried it at home, and it didn't work so well. <laughs> yeah, that didn't work very well at all. We need, to, we need to be servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, then I want you to notice the last thing. Uh, we need to be separated. First Thessalonians, look there in verse 9, the end part. It says, And how ye turned to God from idols. We need to be a church that's separated from the world. I don't want this church to resemble the world. I don't know about you, but the Bible says, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. If we want to be a people that please the Lord, we need to stand up and be different than the world. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We have to live in this world, but we don't have to be of this world. The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Church, I don't know. The Lord thinks that we're strange. You know, they look at us, and, but the Bible says you're a chosen generation, a peculiar people. We are to be different. The world's not going to understand giving the tithe to the church, but we're different. The world's not going to understand why we get up on our only day of the week. Some of us, only day you have off is Sundays. And the people are going to say, why do you go to church so early? Why don't you sleep in and rest? Because we're different. The world don't understand why we don't say nasty, dirty things. That's because we're different. The world don't understand why we, we, we don't drink alcohol and Things like that, because we're different. You see, I don't want the, our music to sound like the world's music. I don't want our church to look like the world. And, and I believe this church is different. This church is a sanctuary. It's sanctified, holy, set apart from the world. See, it's to be used to worship our, our Lord and Savior. It is a place that you can find rest for your weary soul. Our church should look like a church. We don't need a Starbucks or a Jimmy John's in here. This is a church, not a mall. If other church want to do it, that's between them and God, but not here, not why I'm pastor. We need to be separated from the world. I want to be a church that pleases God. I did have one other thing. I know I said that was the last point, but we need to be seeking the Bible says, look there in verse 10, and, and I, this is real quick. It says, and to wait for his son from heaven. Do you realize this? That sometime soon and maybe very soon the Lord's coming back in the clouds to call his church home. I'm talking about the rapture of the church. I'm looking forward to his appearing. Looking, looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. The people in the Bible, you know what they were looking for? The return of Christ. The Bible says, He which testifies these things says, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. John said that in Revelation. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 4, 8, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me unto that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love His appearing. I believe that if we are truly seeking the Lord to come, then we'll be living differently. You know, if we want this church to be a pleasing church in His sight, we need to be saved, we need to be sending, we need to be sorry, we need to be serving, and we need to be separated and be seeking the Lord. Then we can be a church that pleases God. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I want to challenge you this morning to be not just a church, but individuals. Individuals is what makes up the church. Individuals is what makes up the church, and we as individuals need to get our hearts right. We need to be pleasing to God. We need to be pure and holy, a living sacrifice unto God. Maybe you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, I've examined my heart. The Holy Spirit's been dealing with me this morning, and I just don't know for sure that I'm saved. 
I just don't know for sure. I've got some questions. I've, I just don't know if I was to die today that I'd go to heaven. Pastor, would you pray for me? Is there anyone like that? I'm not going to embarrass you. I promise I wouldn't. Thank you for your honesty. Anyone else? Pastor, pray for me. I just don't know for sure. I just don't. I'd like to know, but I just don't. Would you be honest enough to raise your hand? I'm just going to pray for you. Anyone? I see that hand. Anyone else? Maybe you hear it and you say, Pastor, I'm saved, but I'm not serving him like I should. I'm not living for him like I should. Pastor, pray for me. I need your prayers. I, I need to live that pure. You were talking about pure and holy and acceptable unto God. Pastor, I need your prayers. I haven't been what I should be. Pastor, pray for me. Anyone? Thank you for your honesty. Anyone else? Yes. Hands across the room. Yes, thank you. I want to pray for you. And listen, if you meant business with God, you, you want to know for sure how you're saved, I want to challenge you to come this morning. Get that settled. Get that settled this morning before it's eternally too late. Maybe you're here and you're not right. You're not living for God like you should. I want to challenge you to come to this altar. And you know what? The Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just. You can start afresh today. Won't you come? Our Heavenly Father, Lord, I do thank you for how you spoke to my heart, how you've done a great work in my life. And God, I give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor that comes from it. Lord, there's those that raised their hands this morning saying there's some things in their life that's just not right. They're not pure, holy, and acceptable unto you this morning. Lord, I pray that they would find a way to this altar, and Lord, and they would confess that before you this morning. And Lord, uh, for those that may uh, say, well, I believe I'm exactly where God wants me. I'm living for him. Lord, I pray that folks would find a place at the altar and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you because I give you the glory because I couldn't do it on my own. I need your help. And Lord, I pray that, that folks would find a place at this altar and get their hearts right. And Lord, if they are right, that they would say, thank you, Lord, for making me right and helping me. And Lord, for those that raise their hands saying, I just don't know for sure that I'm saved. God, I pray that you would give them boldness. Holy Spirit of God, work in their hearts that they would not leave this place this morning until they know for sure that they're saved. Thank you for what you're going to do. I give you the praise, the glory, and the honor that comes from it. In Jesus' name, amen. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Would you stand to your feet? Miss Liz is going to begin playing softly. God has spoke to your heart this morning. I'm going to ask you to come and find a place at the altar. You say, Pastor, I, I need to get some things right with, you, with the Lord. Pastor, I just need to get right. Won't you come? You say, I'm, I, I believe I'm exactly where I should be, Pastor. I, I believe I am. Well, praise God. Thank God for you. Won't you thank Him? Won't you say, God, thank you? Won't you find a place at the altar and thank Him for His goodness and His grace and His mercy in your life? Maybe you're here and you don't know Him. You just don't know for sure. Won't you come? We can open up God's Word and show you for sure. No, so it's not just a question in your mind, but... Can I say this, if the Holy Spirit of God is dealing with you right now about your salvation, it's not the devil. It's the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit saying, come, come. Why, why, why are you worried about your pride? Why are you worried about anything else? Why are you worried about any, what anybody else thinks? Won't you just come? It's the Holy Spirit. Search me, O oh God. Know my heart today. be seated. do appreciate you being here this morning. And uh, I want to give you a couple announcements as the men come forward, take up this morning's 
uh, tithes and offerings. I want to remind you that tonight's services, tonight's services will be held at Seed Line there in Brazil. If you go down 40, just keep going down 40. It's right across the street from Great Dane. Um, so the services tonight will be there. And uh, Brother Dave Kissler is going to be preaching. Uh, it's a powerful preacher, I'm telling you. you uh, he's been here, and uh, I encourage you to to come tonight to that. And then tomorrow night, I want to remind you, get with Miss Pam. She's organizing our, we're having a meal for those that are going to be at Seedline. And so if you, uh, if you said that you're going to help out, what time do they need to have the food here? No later than 4.30. So if you've, you're providing salad or a dish or a dessert or something like that, make sure it's here by 4.30 tomorrow, and we'll get that to the, uh, the folks there. And we appreciate your help with that. Uh, you say, well, I didn't, I didn't sign up for anything. See, Miss Pam, I'm sure there's some other things that still need to be uh, uh, done. So I uh, appreciate the help there. And then on October the 20th, I want you to mark your calendars for this. We're going to have a family harvest festival. We're going to have a bonfire out here. We're going to have a, a hayride. We want you to bring all your family, all your friends, uh, everybody that you can think of. I'm, I'm looking at trying to get some jumpy houses out here. It's just going to be a good time uh, uh, for the church and for our family friends and things like that. I'm even going to present it to our community. We're going to pass out candy to all the kids that come and uh, have popcorn. It's going to be a really good time. I know I'm talking it up a lot, but I, I, want, you to, I want you to bring some folks here and uh, get, the, get the word out to, to those folks. All right, then our mission of the week, uh, Brother uh, Keith Davison from Seedline. Be praying for Seedline this week uh, that they would uh, raise the funds that's needed to uh, get the word of God out. And then Brother Travis Ivers is our, our deacon this week. Um, Brother Caleb and Miss Haley McGinnis is our family of the week. And then Brother Jimmy Clevenger is uh, our trustee of the week. Pray for Brother Jimmy, of course, uh, with the passing of his mother this last week, but also his dad. Uh, he came back from the funeral from a friend. Uh, his, his mom passed away, then his uh, good friend's mom passed away. And so uh, after that, he came home and found out that his dad was in the hospital and uh, wasn't doing so well. So you pray for him. A lot of trials going on. And folks, we need to pray for each other. And uh, if it was your mom, your dad, uh, your family member, you'd want us praying for you as well. So I uh, would ask that you'd pray for him, and uh, I know that he appreciates that. All right, let's go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Eli, sir, would you please ask a blessing? That. I think that was played in forte or something. That was like, I was trying to sing it. And I can't sing that fast, but uh, no, I appreciate Lizzie filling in for Miss Haley. She's got a cough this morning, so she wanted Lizzie to fill in. Let's all stand and, and we'll close in a word of prayer. Thank you again for being here uh, this morning. And uh, uh, I want you to shake someone's hand, let them know that you appreciate them today, all right? Brother Travis, sir, would you close us in a word?